This is the plaintiff, Amber Kalustian. She says she bought a truck from the defendant, and the guy assured her the transmission was in perfect shape. Fifteen minutes after she had it, the thing broke down on the side of the road. She called the defendant. He told her he'd meet her at the mechanic with a full refund, and the guy never showed up. She's a single mom who can't afford to fix the money truck. The defendant promised her her money back, and she's here suing for it in the amount of $2,230. This is the defendant. Dwayne Ferriulo. He says this crazy woman delivered the truck back to his house, left it in his driveway, and took the keys. His driveway was being held hostage because it blocked in other cars for 21 days until he could get it towed. The plaintiff had no right to have the truck placed in his driveway, and she should have to pay for what she did. He's accused of being a truck trickster. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,575 for storage and towing charges. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a truck from the defendant. It broke down 15 minutes after she got it. The defendant says she screwed up his business royally. It's the case of I can't keep on trucking. Okay, Ms. Kalustian, you're suing Mr. Ferriolo for $20. $230, the amount you paid him for a Chevy Trailblazer that you want returned to you, plus your tow costs and wasted time. You're counterclaiming against her 21 days of storage, loss of use of your driveway, and nuisance value. Okay, tell me what happened here. Um, Dwayne had um, posted a ad on Craigslist for a Trailblazer, and we had been in contact via text message. So on uh, January 1st, I went down to go check it out and um, took it for a test drive. And during the test drive, it felt like the transmission was slipping a little bit. So I brought it back to his house and said, I love the truck. I can't, unfortunately, get it because I can't afford to buy something that's going to break down right away. This um, is a 2002 Chevy Trailblazer? Correct. OK. Um, and How I many had, miles did it have? Uh, 150 Okay, that was advertised. Um, so he went, we actually talked for a couple hours, and he continued to tell me that, you know, it wasn't the transmission, um, call my mechanic. So I did, I called my mechanic and he said, um, it sounds like it, but you know, that's your, your risk. I can look at it first thing on Monday Why morning. Why don't you just run in another direction with you? Well, because I really, honestly, I really- Is it a pretty color? <laughs> no, I really like the truck and um, I thought it was, you know, a good deal with the low miles on it. So he had agreed, he wrote a contract with me saying that um, if anything major was to happen to it, he would refund me the money. Okay, let and me that see was, it. That let, was... me, let me see exactly what the contract says. Yep. Just the word That's major? The actual if anything original major contract. happens, who's going to decide what major is? Transmission is not shifting on its own, but all gears are working. If cost of repair determined to be mechanical and repair cost is over $1,000, okay. I will take the truck back or pay reasonable difference in repair. If I take the truck back, a refund will be issued. Return of the truck in the same condition, physically mechanical. Okay, all right. So it's pretty spelled out there. So right. we went through with the contract. Um, and you paid how much for it? I paid 1980 total. Okay. Um, so I was starting to drive it home. I got 15 miles down the road, and I was on the highway, and the whole truck lost all its power. So I pulled it over to the side of the road. Um, I called him immediately and told him, I broke down, he was asking what was wrong with it. I said, I have no idea, it lost all its power. So I told him I called AAA, and he said, okay, well, I'll come meet you there. So he came, he actually got there before AAA. He looked at it, uh, couldn't figure out what was wrong with it, thought it was really weird, um, told me to have AAA tow it to his mechanic, okay. and he would meet me there with my refund. Because at that point, I wasn't even able to get You had just bought home. the car 15 miles ago. Right. So the tow truck driver came, brought it to the, his mechanic, who nobody was there. Um, nobody was expecting the car. At that point, it was like 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night. Um, or no, I'm sorry, it was like 7. But this was New Year's Day, so. Yeah, why would anybody and, think anybody and he was going to Dwayne didn't show up there. He wasn't answering the phone. I have all my phone records of me calling him while we were there with the tow truck. How many times did you call him? Um... 16 times. Right. Because I didn't know what to do, and the tow truck no, driver was like, well, I can't do, where do you want me to leave it? So his house was only like five miles, four miles from the mechanic, so I said, well, we'll bring it back to his house. Um, so we went to his house. Um, he 
I'm still trying to call him. I called the police. They weren't able to help because it is a civil matter. Um, went and knocked on the door. His girlfriend answered, and she was just saying that he's not going to show up. She has no Wait, idea. Did, did she say where he was? She, she didn't really say. She, actually, she did say there was a family emergency with his grandmother or grandfather. I don't really remember um, who it was, but he wasn't going to show up with the money. Um, so what did you do with she, the car? So I left it right in his driveway. Okay. And I persisted to call him, and I persisted to, the following days, try to make an agreement. Like, can I I'll bring you the keys back? I just need my money back. Right. Um, and what happened in the following days? He sent me links on the laws of Connecticut that once there's a sale that I'm screwed out of my money. And let me hear from you. Good afternoon, Your Honor. <clears throat> um, she came to look at the vehicle. Uh, it was told to her in advance that the transmission was not shifting on its own. And while she was trying to make her decision, um, I've done some research, and that's a common problem with those trucks. It's a, a $50, $60 part plus an hour labor to put it in. And the warranty was based on if it was not that, that I if it was something that was more of a major problem, then we would deal with it at that point, either, you know, if it was a major repair. She paid over $1,000 less than the uh, fair Did purchase. Did you ever take, what happened that day? Why didn't you show up at the at the place? I did show up. I went to where the vehicle stopped, uh, right. had the problem. I couldn't figure out what it was. While I was there, my phone fell out of my pocket when I was looking under the truck and trying, on the side of the highway at night, trying to determine what the problem might be. The AAA driver did come and at, we asked him to bring it to my mechanic. I went home and then I went straight to the mechanic. I was sitting there for about 30 minutes waiting for her. I couldn't call her because my phone was on the side of the highway, the phone that she had the number for. Then I got a call that my grandfather passed How'd away. How'd you get a call? I have two phones. Why do you have two phones? I, I just have two phones. I have two separate lines. One's uh, an old phone I had, and then I got a new contract under a different company, and I still had a contract left on it, so I just had two. Why didn't the, you just call her with the other phone you I had? I didn't have her number. And his girlfriend was <laughs> on the I phone mean, with him. I mean, come on, man, you know? I mean, I, I why did you go home first? I went home to go get some money. I was going to refund her money. She was going to Well, then the next day, why didn't you refund her money? Because at that point, she blocked my driveway, and there were, I have pictures. Blocked your driveway. She brought you the car back, and it was in front of your driveway. That's fine. But if you're going to refund her money, there won't be a problem, right? There's a fluid spill that I couldn't tell where it was from. I wanted the keys to see if it was from the truck or the tow truck. She told me it started pouring out of the truck. Where's the truck right now? The, the, the truck was blocking my driveway for 21 days. I finally had to have it towed. Whose name is the truck under? It, it, it was still under the name of the person I purchased it from. How, how can you even s jump title then? How can you even sell the truck that you With don't the own the title transfer to? of ownership the, uh, the, on the, the title, the, the assignment of ownership? Did you, you tell me a very lengthy story? Oh, hold on, don't talk to him directly. So his defense is, well, maybe I had a duty to pay you back, but you blocked my driveway and hurt my business. Is that a defense? No. No. You seem kind of weak on that one. What do you say? If you owe money, you owe money, so you have to pay it. Is it a defense if she says, oh, you screwed up my business because you, you towed it and blocked the driveway? No, not a defense. I think it's that simple, going inside the courtroom. Did he give you the title? I have the title. Um, I've never bought in a, a used car, so I didn't really understand everything. But it Can wasn't Can I see till, the title? Yeah, after that, I'm like, what am I going to be able to do with this? It wasn't even in his name. Did you ever take that truck to be uh, seen by a mechanic to, to be able to show me, look, judge, the problem is under 1,000? Thank you. I, I wasn't able to. I did not have oh, You could tow it keys. there, right? Thank you, sir. I have uh, all our text messages where I tried several times to get access to the keys to uh, find Let out. Let me see the text message. From your phone, I can see that she's texting you for a solid 45 minutes. Please call me back. Don't know where to put the truck. Hello? Wow, really? I can see all that. Then the next day, so I'm trying to get in touch with you. Call me back. All I need is my money, and we can call it a day. Otherwise, my uncle is a state cop, and we can go that route. <sighs> he finally texts you back at... Ooh, about 7 o'clock at night on January 2nd. I just got my phone back. It was on the side of 15. That's the name of the road? Yes. I did not have your phone number. I was at Budget. That's the name of the repair place. 715 to 735. We know that's not true because I see that you're texting him during that time. So if you're both there, you're seeing each other. 
I had a death in the family at 735 and had to be there for my family. Why were you not at budget? Why is your truck blocking my driveway? And, and as far uh -huh. as threats, save them. When I get home tomorrow, I expect your truck to be out of my driveway. He sends you a text saying on January 3rd, which is just a few days later, options I am comfortable with at the moment. Number one, I will come pick up a key from you and have the truck diagnosed to see what the issue is as far as it not starting. Two, I will have the trailblazer towed to your mechanic. Three, my last and most unappealing option is to call the police to have the truck towed and impounded, which will accrue additional expenses for whoever is determined to be the owner. Please be clear to your attorney so you are correctly informed that I agreed to refund or to pay a reasonable difference on the issue related to the shifting. No other warranty was written, expressed, or extended. I looked up, blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry we're in this situation. Okay, well, my attorney is advising me not to take these options and file paperwork. I will offer one last time for you to refund me in fall. That's just regarding the tow fees. Gas. Let me tell you something. If this car was registered in your name and you had offered her, look, I'll tow it to your mechanic so we can see what's wrong with it, and if it's over 1,000, I'll, I'll come pick up the key from you so we can take it to my mechanic and we can tow it right to my mechanic, I would be with you on this. But you have a second and totally other additional problem, which is that you're jumping title. Daily Motors sold it to Primetime. And then what I need is proof that Primetime sold it to you and you didn't steal it. Where's, is that what you're saying this is? Why wasn't this signed by Primetime? I, I, that's the way the then it's jumping was you didn't. You're not giving her a clean title. For that reason alone, the lady deserves her money back because you didn't give her a clean title. You can't do that. You're causing her problems with registering the car. Where did the car end up again? Uh, the car what? got towed by a uh, tow company. I called the company okay. that was closer to her. I mean, there's value to the truck no matter what. Why would you get rid of it and just kind of... Because she was refusing to take it, and I had no way of moving it. I know, but how are you... Well, you do have a way of moving it, Sweet Pea. You could... You, you, you do. Uh, she just, well, she'll give you the key as soon as you give her the money. Can you prove you have $100 in tow costs? And you're not getting gas and time wasted. You, you, know, you bought yourself a real pickle when you knew that there was a problem with this thing. Well, it, it was definitely a very valuable lesson learned. I thought you had AAA. Why were you charged for the tow? Because um, I only have so many miles that AAA covers. It was, it's a basic membership. I think it covers the first five. I'm ordering you to return the 1980 plus the $100 in tow cost. On your counterclaim against her for $25 a day of it blocking you. I think it was nervy of her to leave it at your house. I think it was more nervy of you to get rid of it like that. Um, it's what puts us in the position that we're in today. I am ruling against you on your counterclaim. Verdict for the plaintiff. So the plaintiff does indeed prevail. Dennis, uh, do you feel guilty at all for what she had to go through? No, I made every attempt to try and fix the problem, to try and fix the vehicle, to have it towed to her. She was being unreasonable. All she wanted was her money back, and there was no two ways about it. The only warranty I gave was one for one part of the vehicle, not for the whole vehicle. Well, it certainly sounds like you did not do right by her. It's the way it came off in court. And obviously, you lost big time. Yeah. Sorry about that. Well, you must sign some documents outside. Thank you very much for being here. Now. Here comes the plaintiff, Ms. Kalustian. How do you feel about this? Good. You feel good? I do. You're smiling? Finally? Yeah. Did you learn anything through all of this? Not to purchase a vehicle through Craigslist. Okay, that's one way. Yes. Good enough. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank Sorry you. you had to go through all of this. I'm glad it's done. That thank way? You. Harvey? You know, Doug, everybody thinks that either you get a warranty or you don't. The fact is, even if somebody isn't offering a warranty, you can always try and negotiate one. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.